Hello there, my dear viewers. This is a quick introduction on what I'm about to do right now. Look, I'm editing to the, on my balcony because it's good weather, finally. Uh, so, without further ado, let me explain. Uh, of course, there was this bombshell of information uh, the last week with David Grush revealing there's uh, UAP crash retri retrievals with alien bodies in American possession and it has been so for decades. Um, now, I have seen some documentation um, on that. I'm gonna be careful now a little bit because I, I got, there's a lot of uh, people who are being very, very, very skeptic, but uh, rightfully so, of course. Let's stick with the facts. Uh, but there was a little bit of a pattern I found uh, in the two year long uh, interview streak I've had with key players, key figures like Lou Elizondo many times, Mr. the late Mr. Harry Reid, uh, Christopher Mellon, Avi Loeb, etc., etc., etc. And of course, uh, my trip uh, to San Marino where I've met some of the uh, Italian people who actually uh, had a lot of information on this uh, Mussolini UAP. So, um, in all of these interviews, um, there was a lot of hidden pearls that now make sense, even my trip to San Marino. So, uh, I made a, a short documentary about that, a short reportage, if you will. Uh, the puzzle pieces are falling together, kind of. So I hope you guys enjoy this and um, enjoy watching. The, the last couple of months, uh, there's, there's a slow drip of information about uh, whatever the phenomenon is. Um, I've noticed there's much more hinting towards extraterrestrial. Uh, now, I know this is a question you don't, m probably don't want to answer or have to answer, but um, are we facing a um, revelation anytime soon that this is not earthly? That, that's a great question, Max. Um... Bombshell claims from a military whistleblower, UFO wreckage recovered by the U.S. kept classified by a secret government program for decades. Look, I, I've said this before, the likelihood of this being, well, first of all, it's not U.S. tech. We know that, we've already admitted it, it's not. We admitted it to ourselves, we admitted it to the world. Uh, we're, we're past that in the conversation. Uh, Every day that goes by, it is increasingly likely that this is not some sort of foreign technology. So the question is, at that point, then what is it, right? Yeah. Um, we can speculate, but I think we need more data. Um, I, all I have said for the record, and I still maintain that, is that it's not our technology, and it's becoming exceedingly unlikely that it's some sort of foreign technology. So the question is, and whose is it? Or what is it, right? And where is it from? Yes. Um, these are the questions that, that we're asking here today. This is, this is why we're in San Marino. Yeah. It's exactly for that reason. We need to start asking those hard questions. Um, if it's not from here, then, you know, we, we, we've, we've got a lot of soul searching to do. You won't believe it. A day later, the NDAA report dropped. You gotta be kidding me. And I was there when that came in. I was there. Lucky, lucky me. A very symbolic day. But today, uh, something is going to drop. Uh, <laughs> you, you guys have a scoop. Uh, Mr. Elizondo, can you please elaborate on what just dropped in your iPhone? Yes. Uh, so it appears that the uh, new NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, uh, not quite sure yet if it's, this is the final draft language or if this is the, the, the real final version, uh, appears to uh, be about five pages. And what we'd like to do with you uh, is to be the first to really discuss it with you. The hard questions were being asked and now they had to oblige. That happened. It was just meant to be. What you're about to hear is a direct result of your efforts to Congress. Um, <laughs> if you want to, if you ever wanted proof that uh, that the UA little UAP community uh, that could um, D 
did, here it is. So, well, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, I'll read the first paragraph, you read the second paragraph. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Establishment. This is from uh, section 1652, Establishment of Office to Address Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. You guys ready? You sitting down, you buckled up, you got your seatbelt, got a nice cocktail in your hand, because you deserve it. Subsection A, establishment. No later than 180 days after the date of the enactment of this act, the Secretary of Defense, in coordination with the Director of National Intelligence, shall establish an office within the Office of the Secretary of Defense to carry out on a department-wide basis, wait for it, um, one, the mission currently performed by the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force as of the date of the enactment of this act. B. Duties. Uh, the duties of the office established under subsection A shall include um, uh, hold on, the following. Developing procedures to synchronize and standardize the collection, reporting and analysis of incidents regarding unidentified aerial phenomena across the Department of Defense. Second, developing process processes and pro uh, Proce procedures to ensure that such incidents from each military department are reported and incorporated in a centralized repository. Lou, please yes. take over. Establishing procedures to require the timely and consistent reporting of such incidents. Subsection 4, evaluating links between unidentified aerial phenomena and adversarial foreign governments or the other foreign governments or non-state actors, evaluating the threat that such incidents present to the United States, coordinating with other departments and agencies of the federal government as appropriate, coordinating with allies and partners of the United States as appropriate to better assess the nature and extent of unidentified aerial phenomena. Whoa, wait a minute. Yep. That's big. Yeah, I, I do think uh, this is why it's so in, yeah, important, because if it were to be true, and, and, and it is not from here, not from Earth, then that means uh, life as we know it is going to be different. Yeah, and maybe, and I don't think in a bad way, no. necessarily, I think it's, uh, well, it's very much like here in San Marino. Imagine living your whole life inside a wall, and one day realizing that there's a whole world outside the wall. What is it like the very first day that you walk outside, you've lived your entire life inside the beautiful walls, right? And all of a sudden you realize most of the world, most of the universe isn't in here. It's out there. Yeah. Right? And do you believe that? Is it out there? Well, I think we only have to do is look up and realize it is out there. You know, 99.99% of our universe is beyond our, our, our direct observation or even comprehension. That's a fact. One of the great things about the Gillibrand Amendment is that it requires continuing unclassified reports issued to the public. So if that amendment doesn't pass, there is no requirement, no demand on the executive branch to produce any more unclassified reports. The second thing is that there are already some people associated with the Galileo Project who are exposed to uh, classified information, but don't share it like Lou and I. It's not relevant, it's not pertinent, they don't want it. And sure. that is that I believe there's a lot of information in government channels, not available to the public, which is either currently unclassified or could readily be declassified. And one of the things that we can do on that panel is help to be advocates for that and review that. I can, Lou and I have both seen things, videos that are nearly identical in every way to the ones that have been released. They're, they're not, they, they couldn't possibly damage national security, but they haven't been released. Right. And I think there's there's a considerable more data like that. We'd like to see, uh, see more of that shared with the public and the scientific community. It looks like we are advancing technologically very fast as humankind at this moment. You know, uh, our and it you know it it really speeds up you know uh, what we are being able to do right now technologically as as humans. Do do you think there is a correlation between what Lockheed Martin might or might not have 
and our advances in technology? I think that there's no question that we're advancing in technology in many different parts of the scientific world. Uh, and I repeat what I said before, I think this is something the government must be transparent with. And I'm not sure they have been. Uh, okay. And I think that uh, this is something that America must do because it, as I've indicated, Putin was head of the KGB and had 30,000 agents working for him. So we know that he's looking into all this stuff. Uh, we know that China's looking into this. We know that France is looking into this. And I think that we have to stay on top of it as far as I'm concerned with the United States government. You cannot let this go without some continual evaluation of what's up. Do you think there is Roswell debris? in the hands of the United States government or from another incident before or after? Well, you know, uh, as we're talking about our conversation this morning, I tried to find out and was turned down. Now, at the time, I wasn't uh, the leader of the Senate. I was just an individual senator. Uh, and I think that uh, withholding whatever information Gate has is not good for the country, if in fact they have any. Yes, sir. Um, have you ever been briefed uh, on a crash before you uh, received uh, Mr. Bigelow's letter in your time working for the U.S. government? Was this ever discussed before? What I did when I read that letter from the Defense Intelligence Agency is I called that man. I didn't want to come to my home, didn't want to go to his office, so I came to my home. And he was a PhD physicist. He was very logical. And basically what he said, I know where rockets are today. I know where they started. I know where they ended up. So I understand rocketry well. But what I don't understand is these unidentified flying objects. And that's where we need to do more work. And I believe that he was right. I still believe he's right. And I think that uh, we need to move along on this and do everything we can to continue the study. It's, there's interest in stimulated. The American people are curious. They want to know more. And I think that uh, we should put all guns aboard and just move forward on this in any way we can. I think the government should spend more money than the, my ATIP money. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And the American people deserve to know what we know and what we don't know. Is this something uh, that is important that if we have uh, knowledge on the phenomenon, we could back engineer it and possibly, uh, you know, enhance our technology? Absolutely, in my mind. I mean, we're seeing objects that are using some kind of propulsion system that we don't understand. It's not the the kind of thing that we use to power virtually any other aircraft. It's not combustion uh, engineering. They're not inhaling oxygen and mixing it with fuel and igniting it. Uh, there's no air intake on a lot of these things. There's no exhaust. Uh, there's no wings. There's a lot of novel, if not radical, uh, perhaps unknown to us technology being involved there, they could have all, all manner of, of extraordinary benefits if we're able to emulate it and understand it. Um, so that's, that's a ways off, but that is absolutely one of the potential long-term benefits. For sure, uh, for sure. Um, uh, Mr. Mellon, can I ask you, uh, what was it that made you convinced that there's something penetrating our skies um, that shouldn't be there or we just don't know what it is because when I talked to uh, former Senator Reid the first time he really took UAP seriously was when Mr. Bigelow sent him information. Now uh, he had already access to the Blue Book files, Grudge. Um, what was it that made you convinced there's something to be investigated? 
Well, <clears throat> two things really. I was participating in as a consultant in some official meetings in the Pentagon when I became aware of the extraordinary number of incidents that were occurring off the East Coast. And when I pursued that and looked into it and actually talked to some of the Navy pilots personally, there was no question in my mind that this was going on. It was extensive. It had been going on for a long time and nobody was doing anything about it. They weren't reporting it up the chain of command, much less trying to analyze it or understand it. So to me, that was a massive intelligence failure. It was totally unacceptable. It was lack of support for our, for our people. And uh, I was determined at that point to do whatever I could to try to try to correct the problem. As, as Dr. Loeb says, Avi said, uh, it was kind of a case that the emperor's not wearing any clothes. And somebody's got to stand up and say, you know, somebody's got to say that. So I became, Lou and I were running around saying that all over, you know, anywhere we could get an audience. Right. Uh, now there are some accounts of um, Lockheed Martin um, being in possession of uh, extraterrestrial debris. I know you have, have in fact tried to, um, you know, get into uh, that information and you were for some reason denied. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Do you know for a fact they have extraterrestrial I debris? Thought, thought that, uh, I thought that uh, if they had something there, I'd want to see it. And so I went through the hoops necessary to get clearance and they wouldn't give it to me. Now, I'm not too sure that that would be the same answer today. Maybe it would be, but I think we've made a lot of headway uh, since that time of making sure that there's transparency in everything we do in government. Gave a few hints before, uh, but Roswell may not have been the first event, um, and and well known. I mean, there's been some 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 reporting internationally as well that there have been some some crashed vehicles, and they were uh, they were obtained by local authorities, and uh, there was some some scientific study done on them. Um, I want to be very careful not to go too far down the rabbit hole, but. I've seen personally some documentation that's very compelling from a, from a particular foreign country um, where they had a, re, a recovery of, of, of a vehicle. And um, okay. there, they had some, some countries conducting scientific analysis on it. And uh, after World War II, uh, allegedly, um, parts of that, that vehicle were, were brought to the United States. Grush alleges the US government has recovered non-human craft for decades. He's filed a whistleblower complaint saying he gave what he calls the classified proof to Congress and the intelligence community inspector general. News Nation has confirmed David Grush's credentials and resume. We've not seen or verified the alleged proof he says he's provided to investigators. He says he can't show us the proof for national security reasons. He also tells us he's not seen photos of the alleged craft himself, but has talked extensively with other intelligence officials who have. If you're right, if you're telling us the truth, mm -hmm. Everyone, the entire American public, has been lied to for decades. Yeah, there's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace, which is extremely unethical and immoral. It, Italy. Yeah, it was Italy. Yeah, uh, oh. that's as, as it was uh, explained to me. I saw some documentation. Uh, look, you know, I, I don't want to get too much into the you know, conspiracy side of the house. Uh, there is some documentation that has been validated uh, that was uh, that was from Mussolini himself, uh, right. and uh, it uh, it's you know it's it's authentic. It's been proven to be authentic. The the documentation. You are saying to the human race for the first time, an official intelligence representative at a high level from the U.S. government is saying publicly, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. <clears throat> we're talking about a 1933 UFO recovery in Italy. Um, UFO recovery uh, in Italy, I, I think it was. Uh, now, I've asked you before, uh, was it a crashed vehicle or was it something that was dug up, like an archeological found, finding? 
according to my knowledge, it was not dug up, repeat not. It was something that landed and or crash landed. This is a telegram. This telegram was sent by the news agency. Uh, the Stefani was the name news agency, which was the only official news agency of the time. Classified riservatissimo, which means confidential. And it has the highest priority. And it's uh, dated uh, June 13th of 1933 at 16 hours so the text which i have translated below it says by superior order it is disposed to treat the news diffused with stephanie's dispatch number 6631c of today as follows aircraft above recognized as meteor repeats meteor by the Brera Astronomical Observatory, which is the most was the most important uh, observatory at the time, give minimum graphic relevance to the news. No need, repeat, no need to correct. Minimize immediate confirmation of receipt required, uh, signed by the Director of Special Affairs. Grush alleges the U.S. government has recovered non-human craft for decades. He's filed a whistleblower complaint saying he gave what he calls the classified proof to Congress and the intelligence community inspector general. News Nation has confirmed David Grush's credentials and resume. We've not seen or verified the alleged proof he says he's provided to investigators. He says he can't show us the proof for national security reasons. He also tells us he's not seen photos of the alleged craft himself, but has talked extensively with other intelligence officials who have. If you're right, if you're telling us the truth, mm -hmm. Everyone, the entire American public, has been lied to. And uh, by the way, this image shows the place, the location of the crash of the landing. It's not far from Milan mm. and not far from Varese you, that you see here. So this is the general area where the, this, this aircraft would have... Uh, landed or crashed landing we we, we don't know for sure now <clears throat> sir if mm -hmm. i can uh, uh, interrupt for <laughs> one more time mm -hmm. um the, the i've heard uh, the vehicle was a silver disc and, and that is that true i'm showing this image because this is um um that was a hanger or one or more hanger which were the property of the society ci marchetti which was one of the top producer of aircraft at that time and they they said that this vehicle of or what remained of this vehicle was um concert was was stored here in this uh, in this facility <clears throat> this, now, in, are, are we talking hangar. about like the italian area 51 or s4 uh well uh, you know what uh, 51 or x4 are uh, specifically designated localities for this kind of activities this was um a facility where they that was in in the vicinity of the of the landing site that they used w which was on hand to to store these uh, these uh, de debris or this craft whatever it was you are saying to the human race for the first time an official intelligence representative at a high level from the u.s government is saying publicly we are not alone we're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone, yeah. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of Well, naturally, um, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, um, sometimes you encounter um, dead pilots. And uh, believe it or not, as, fa as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. At one of the symposia, symposia in San Marino, in uh, 2010 it was we had this intervention by this gentleman named william brophy this yeah. gentleman from the us said that his father 
was an officer in the U.S. Air Force. And that, when he was in, in his duty, was had the possibility, it was shown the bodies kept on under formalin of two aliens, of the, the classical Nordic aliens, so to speak. A, a bodies a bit damaged, but, yeah. but easily recognizable, I mean. Uh, and they were the classic kind of Nordic aliens. The, this is interesting, I mean, because this gentleman, Brophy, William Brophy, said that his father was all, uh, also was told that these two bodies were confiscated in Italy, in northern Italy, at the end of the war by, by the, the US Americans. Army by the U.S. Army, which, of course, brought them to the U.S. So, so there are speculations, indeed, that Mussolini could have been induced to ally with Germany because uh, he could have thought that these two aliens were indeed Germans. And that yeah. and and that aircraft was that that landed or crash landed in northern Italy was actually um, a Wunderwaffen, uh, one of those uh, special Secret. weapons, uh, special yeah. weapons that the Germans were secretly developing. Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles. You know, call it spacecraft if you will, non-human exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. No. I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived. It was a ruse. People started confiding in me. They approached me. I have plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program. They named the program. I've never heard of it. And they, they told me, based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other, other proof, that there was, in fact, a program that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. I'll leave you with one thing. We have scientists here today. And, of course, you hear, ah, oh, UFOs, UAPs is a crazy hypothesis. But let me ask you this. Doesn't everything in science, every major advancement in science and understanding start with one crazy hypothesis that turns out to be right? Yes. Yes. Galileo. That's right. Yeah. Among the many others, right? Yeah. They come up with this crazy hypothesis. You're crazy. You're wasting time. You're not even a scientist. Turns out, wait a minute. It's a paradigm changing moment. Right? Yeah. And so uh, these, are, these are moments in time where humanity is forced to grow. And either, it's like a crab molting its skin. Either, either you grow out of your shell or you stay trapped in the one you're in. Yes. And uh, if you stay trapped, you choose to stay trapped the one you're in, you're never gonna grow. You're gonna remain that size yeah. forever. So uh, we have a choice. And that is to, to break out of the shell that we're in and, and, and grow as a species in our understanding or stay in the show. Is this something uh, that is important that if we have uh, knowledge on the phenomenon, we could back engineer it and possibly, uh, you know, enhance our technology? Absolutely, in my mind. I mean, we're seeing objects that are using some kind of propulsion system that we don't understand. It's not the, the kind of thing that we use to power virtually any other aircraft. It's not combustion uh, engineering. They're not inhaling oxygen and mixing it with fuel and igniting it. Uh, there's no air intake on a lot of these things. There's no exhaust. Uh, there's no wings. There's a lot of novel, if not radical, uh, perhaps unknown to us technology being involved there. They could have all all manner of, of extraordinary benefits if we're able to emulate it and understand it um so that's that's a ways off but that is absolutely one of the potential long-term benefits for sure uh for sure um uh, mr mellon can i ask you uh what was it that made you convinced that there's something penetrating our skies um that 
shouldn't be there or we just don't know what it is because when i talked to uh, former senator reed the first time he really took uap seriously was when mr bigelow sent him information now uh he had already access to the blue book files grudge um what was it that made you convinced there's something to be investigated well <clears throat> two things really i was participating in as a consultant in some official meetings in the pentagon when i became aware of the extraordinary number of incidents that were occurring off the east coast and when i pursued that and looked into it and actually talked to some of the navy pilots personally there was no question in my mind that this was going on it was extensive it had been going on for a long time and nobody was doing anything about it they weren't reporting it up the chain of command much less trying to analyze it or understand it so to me that was a massive intelligence failure it was totally unacceptable it was lack of support for our for our people and uh i was determined at that point to do whatever i could to try to try to correct the problem as as dr lobe says avi said uh, it was kind of a case of the emperor's not wearing any clothes and somebody's got to stand up and say you know somebody's got to say that so i became lou and i were running around saying that all over you know anywhere we could get an audience right uh now the resistance to this disclosure from from human uh, kind because human beings have a, a reflex right and the reflex is whatever i don't know uh, is threatening or scary or um, it, it messes with my uh axioms you know whatever our, my life was like now i don't want it to Max, change you're yeah. absolutely right let me give you a case in point two months ago i was told i had cancer yeah okay now it looks like i don't but but you know what my very first reaction was when the doctor came in and said we need to talk you have a mass on your kidney it was i don't believe it instinctually myself i told myself no way denial right denial yeah and then came what does this mean to me and how does this how fight. do i how, fight how do i reconcile this with everything else that i know to be true well i feel fine while well, i look okay this can't be true right no i'm not this, right so that is a natural human reaction i just went through that very same thing a couple months ago yeah but you went through the uh, process of accepting death well i think when it comes to the uap topic you know we we're we're just now having this conversation we're just now being told uh something that is changing our paradigm yeah and uh so our initial gut reaction is up oh, no way i can't believe it right it's going to take time yeah so i think the symbolism here is very powerful because death is also i don't know what happens after great point yeah that's right so this uncertainty right yes. the big unknown am well, i going to heaven or right. am i just worm right and if by the way it turns out that there are things called UAPs and UFOs what does that mean for me yeah. what does that mean for the way i was raised and everything i was taught right is all this no longer relevant or is it maybe even more precious right are so. we are we afraid of maybe in a way dying a dying species or moving forward to being uh, evolved else? species right. yeah yeah what are we you answer me so, <laughs> well man i i don't know i i think we're probably i'm probably more like one of these stones in this big wall here you know there's a lot of stones here that created created the apartment up there uh you know i think we're probably just one of these stones on our way up hopefully uh, and not on our way down yeah right hopefully the stairs are going up and not down <laughs> uh but uh the yeah unknown. we're going the to unknown. the unknown there ever been an effort or or have you ever tried to combine that information and maybe even now uh use uh because my feeling is this everything that's still classified cannot be shared with science yet but if like for example what miss gillibrand is doing and you can pile up all this information onto one central uh, centralized uh, system uh, it would be so much more easy i guess for the science uh, to compare what is ever, whatever is for, uh, uh, at hand and work with now is this something you or miss gillibrand are lobbying for well absolutely that's part of the intent of her amendment to to help overcome what you refer to as these different stovepipes it's a huge problem 
when 9-11 occurred in the aftermath and that was analyzed, one of the conclusions was if FBI and CIA had been sharing information, they might have been able to prevent that tragedy. Right. And so this is a very similar situation, only it's it's more extensive and worse because there are many more agencies that have relevant information, not just CIA and FBI. So it's crucial from the government national security standpoint, at least, to start bringing the puzzle pieces and putting them in one room on one table and uh, putting them together. And the more of that information we can share with the scientific community as well, the better. Max, so, Max uh, I stopped you before when you asked uh, Chris about last week. Maybe you want to uh, get into that. Mr. Mellon? Well, the, <laughs> Lou, <laughs> Lou and I were in, uh, in D.C. Uh, most of the week uh, in support of the Gillibrand Amendment and uh, speaking in, with uh, and consulting with different people on the Hill and in the executive branch and trying to do whatever we could to be to be of assistance and uh, um, we had a, we had a we had a good meaningful time down there and we're, we're tentatively optimistic well that's great I, I, I had the feeling when I saw um, Miss Gillibrand's uh, speech a couple of weeks ago uh, that she had been um, extended some more information uh, than uh, let's say usual that may might have convinced her a bit more to push this um, could that be true by any chance, Mr. Mellon? She has some very good staff people. By the way, she, she said that uh, she will uh, get a T-shirt from uh, her children uh, of the best mom of the year. And uh, <laughs> because they are very curious about the uh, extraterrestrials. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, suggest that uh, we will also send her a T-shirt with the Galileo Project logo. Well, uh, thank you for that, Mr. Loeb. That, uh, that is a very promising statement for the best mom of the year. You a national security component to this. So that is kind of what got the members really to engage when they met with these Navy pilots and they looked them in the eye and those, those uh, airmen told them what their experiences had been. I would say that's in terms of effect on the members and getting them to engage. You notice Bill Nelson, the, the director of NASA, has been talking about that. That's because he was a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee when we pushed to, to get those pilots in there and have those briefings. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know, by, by, by good luck, he is now the director of NASA, and it's obviously had a huge effect on his thinking. So I think everybody's efforts to advance the conversation and, and get the information out are helpful and contribute and positive, and I support all that. But in terms of the actual impact on the legislators, I think first and foremost, it's been the uh, the Navy and the military and the national security argument. Well, yeah, Mr. Mellon, to elaborate on the Bill Nelson, he has actually stated, you know, this could be uh, extraterrestrial. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, yeah. It's great. It's great. He's, he's got an open mind. It's wonderful. We need more of that. I think, it, of course, it could be extraterrestrial. I've, written about that. I've written about the extraterrestrial hypothesis. I think if you look at the unclassified report that was presented from the intelligence community, that hypothesis fits the data better than any other hypothesis that I'm aware of. But, you know, that's not proof of anything. Um, sure. That's that's informed speculation. And so <laughs> what really counts is ultimately is getting the data and, and that scientists can use and uh, to really find out for certain rather than just be speculating about what's going on. But you know what it is? It's not death, it's a metamorphosis. Yes. Right? It is, it is a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Yes. And during that time it's in the cocoon, there's lots of uncertainty. But, but in order to build up, you must first break down. Yep. And that is, that is the way Mother Nature is. And also, now I found out you're Jewish. Uh, you know, uh, Jews don't really, no, Jews don't claim there is an afterlife because we don't know, right. so we don't disqualify it. But one thing is for certain in Judaism, and that is that energy never goes. That's right. Yeah, it never dies. That's right. So whatever. It's by the way, proven by science, right? Cannot be created nor destroyed. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man, this is uh, something else, man. It's, uh, I think, 
you know, the transformative process of mankind is, is inevitable. I think, it's, I think it's time we have the conversation as a species, wherever that conversation takes us. Right. Right. I, I don't yeah. know where it's going to lead. I, I, I really don't. Really, you have this great big master plan? No, I don't. No. You know, I, I don't know how to tell you. Surprise, I mean, I don't know where this path leads. I, I, just, I just know that the path there leads to nowhere. It's, it's, it's a brick wall. Right. Because we're, we, we are now faced with the fact that there are things that aren't ours. We don't know how they work. We don't know where they're from. We don't know who's behind the wheel. We don't know their intentions. Whatever it is, right? We don't know where it's from. So at least let's ask the question. Because by us not asking the question doesn't change the calculus at all. Yeah, dare to ask the question. Yeah. Don't be right. afraid. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, might as well. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. All right.